How's it going? Jamie Beamish here from AG Rugby. Um, I put together a little um, strength and conditioning program for you guys um, as requested by your coaches. Um, so just wanted to talk you through it a little bit um, just to avoid any confusion. And I'm always an uh, email or a text away and I'll share those details with uh, with your coaches. But as we get into it, we've got a run plan, we've got a gym plan and we have a little body weight um, plan for those that may be on holiday, vacation and um, whatnot and to top off some run. So Monday. So uh, without any further ado, um, first page you'll see a needs analysis. Uh, a needs analysis. So if you have a little read at the top, and then you find your position, or find the maybe the top three positions that you can play, or you've been asked to play, or you may want to play as you kind of go through college. Um, split up into the colours between the um, between the tight loose forwards and the inside and outside backs and then if you're unsure kinesiology might not be your thing i've put the um so you've got the demands of your position and then on the right hand side we've got um the definitions of those demands so what we're really looking for from each position like i said in the top you should be in the in a general period which is what you guys are in now you should be looking to kind of get better at everything and then when it comes to closer to the season, the preseason and the in season, then you're really honing in on the things that you're good at to make yourself a better player. So with gym work, the first page you'll get to for the gym work will be your exercise prescription. So basically, this is all of the exercises that fall under each category. So a power option, cleans, um, squat jumps, dumbbell box jumps, squat options. So just variants of a squat pattern, so a trap bar, back squat, front squat. Hinge options, which is essentially your RDL and variations of, and as you carry on going to the right, you've got your push and pull vertical horizontal. So that's just the angle that you're pushing and pulling up. So vertical will be straight up and down, horizontal will be laying down, pushing straight up and down. Um, so I think L shape versus I shape. Then the same thing with push vertical, push horizontal, core carry, plyo lower and plyo upper. So this is this is the bit that might be confusing. Um, we're going to look at this column by column. So we'll just go through day one and day three. So on day one, you can see it's a Monday. It's a lower strength and power day. Activation, we jump on the bike for 10 minutes. And then we hit two sets of 10 of a Soleus raise, a calf raise, and a scorpion. Then we get into our potentiation, which is the part of the warm-up where we really look to bridge the gap between heating the body and the movements we're about to do. So we're going to do four empty barbell RDLs into a front squat, into a hand clean, into a back squat. And we're going to repeat that sequence twice. That's what we call a barbell complex where you never, ever let the bar, um, you never re-rack the bar or stop. You just keep going for it. So four exercises, two sets. Rep count for eight exercises for day one and two. Okay, so as you can see, this column has been merged across both columns. So in week one, we're going to complete a warm-up set or two of maybe five and three reps building up the weight. And then we're going to hit eight, eight, six, and five. Week two, we're going to hit six, six, five, and four. Week three, four sets, five, five, four, three. And week four, 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 three, two. If we think about percentage of our one rep max, so if we can lift 100 pounds as our maximum squat, I know that's unrealistic, but um, well, it's pretty easy. Or well, let's say 100 kgs. If we're going to hit eight reps, we're kind of probably going to be about 70% of that. So it's probably going to be 70 kgs. And then as we get to the six reps, we might add another five kilograms to the bar. Five reps, we're going to add another five, rooms, uh, five kilograms to the bar. If you think about it, you, we, I like to talk about reps in reserve. So if we complete the exercise, how many reps could we have done over the amount of reps that we did without having to do them? So if you're thinking eight, you probably did eight, but you could have done 10. If you're doing six, you did six, but you could have done seven and a half, eight. If you're doing five, you could have maybe done six. Um, we don't want to be doing an eight rep max. We don't want to hit eight reps and that's the maximum we can hit at that weight. That will just fatigue you overly and you'll be destroyed after two or three days and so on. Rep count for B exercise, so B is our accessory exercise, so that's like a 3 times 12, 3 times 10, 3 times 8, 4 times 6. So as we move their flat sets, so the weight does stay the same, 12 reps in re 12 reps equals 15 reps in reserve, 10 reps equals 12, 2 reps in reserve, so 12, 8 reps equals another 2 in reserve, so you could probably do 10 at that weight, and then 4 times 6 is, you could probably get 7.5, you're kind of getting the idea now. So the format here. We've got the squat option is our first exercise and the accessory is our plyo option one. So if we go back, we pick an exercise from the squat option, we go over to plyo lower. 2A and 2B, so we've got the hinge option and the single leg option. So we pick something from the hinge option and we pick something from the single leg option. 3A and 3B, so we've got core and carry option. Obviously that's not stated above, but you're gonna do three sets of 30 meters if it's a carry, so that could be a farmer carry. And then for your core exercise, you're probably going to go with the B count. So 
but that's a choice of core and carry. So core and carry, so if you're gonna do a core exercise, you're gonna do an ab rollout, suitcase carry, farmer carry, whatnot. If you're doing a, sorry, carry exercise, and if you're doing a core exercise, you can do basically ab exercises. Sorry, I got that mixed up there. Um, carry, just think walking, good posture, core, think you're hitting your abs, your obliques, your hip flexors. <laughs> Below that, I've put my approach to this. So well, the way I would attack this is a front squat and a box jump, a snatch grip RDL and an overhead lunge, a farmer carry and a pogo hop. So that's just an example to make it a little bit easy for you. And then at the bottom, we've got some off-feet conditioning. So basically, this is a pick one of the three, and then tomorrow, pick a different one of the three. Two colon one WR, that is work to rest. So if you are going to work for... If your 400 meters takes you two minutes, you're gonna then rest for one minute. If your four times 250 meter ski takes you three and a half minutes, you're gonna rest for one minute and 45 seconds. As we get to the right, to day three, it changes a little bit. So day one and day two is the same format. Day three is a little different. You've got the 10 minute spin, you've got your exercises there to, to get yourself through the, I like to call those prehab. And then we're gonna do a full barbell complex. So three sets of six exercises, six reps per exercise. So that's RDL, bent over row, hand clean, front squat, push press, back squat. So we just complete them. As you can see, the ending position of the exercise is the starting position of the next exercise. Then we've got an extra box. We've got the P exercises, the power. So week one and two, we're gonna do five times three of P1 and P2. Week three and four, five times two of P1 and P2, increasing in weight ever so slightly. When we do power exercises, we're looking at 50 to 60% of our one rep max for maximum force production. So if we're doing a trap bar jump, you could probably do three, 400 pounds on a trap bar. But if we're doing jumps, you're going to do 140 to 160 pounds. We want to move fast. If it's a power exercise, we're not trying to build strength. We're trying to build power. 1A, 1B, single legs, hinge and a single leg option. 2A is a GHD. So if we go back to our, um, our hinge option, GHD, glute ham developer, so isometrics, eccentrics, concentrics, Nordics. We're going to do isometrics, and as you can see, GHD, isometric DHD, three times 30. I would use that example if I were you, and if you don't know what that is, just give it a Google. If you haven't got that equipment, do a Nordic hamstring curl. And then you've got um, 2B at the bottom here, top-up conditioning. This is more anaerobic, so this is building speed, endurance, and explosiveness. Nine times 10-second hits in a assault bike. You, rest, you work for 10 seconds. You rest for 50 seconds. All right, so real hard hits here. And then day four, this is a bit of an optional extra day. This is just a bit of a pump. Um, nice way to get the blood flowing as well. So you're going to hit one times 20 of these. The diamond push-up inverted row is your warm-up. And then we're going to smash the arms, smash the shoulders, and then smash the core. Then if you want, I mean, I always would get the top-up conditioning done afterwards. Running options, so in your own time, just take a look at these. Um, if you don't have a rugby field, use a soccer field and then just change the 22 for the 18 yard and all of that kind of thing. If you don't have a soccer or a rugby field, well, I'm sure you do, so go and find one. Um, you, there's, there's plenty of options anywhere. If you go there and you get kicked off, then it is what it is. At least you've got most of the work done. Um, if it's meters and you don't have lines, 10 meters is 14 steps. 10 meters, 14 steps. So just pace it out the best you can. So this might look confusion, but we use meters to quantify load when we run. So in a MLR game, which is what you aspire to be, and an MLR game may there may be a bit more running than your games, but that's good because you're preparing yourself for the very worst or for the very best if you like running. So three three thousand two hundred meters for a prop, hooker three thousand four hundred meters, and so on and so forth. This is total volume. All right, so this is everything above about three meters per second, so everything above a jog. So we split this up into two days to get the work. We do half on a Monday, half on a Tuesday. If you've got a 10-week program you need to fill up now, you'll do this for five weeks. You'll nail this for five weeks here. Go back to your options, find out how you can get your 1,600 meters. Oh, okay, I can do five coat hangers for... A thousand meters and I can do six scissors for 600 meters. There's a little working example here for the hooker, 1700 meters. So you're going to do three 200 100s, three 40 20s, 350 meter sprints. You get one 850, it's always better to go over. I only did that because I didn't want to write one times 50 meter sprint because we probably won't do one times just one sprint. We'll do get three done. Here's more running options on the on the third page of the run section. And then for the second half of the program, we want to try and emphasize high speed a little bit more. So we're going to use the same value, 
but we're gonna break it up to a volume day. So we're gonna do a bit more on day one and then a little bit more, a little less, sorry, with higher rest on day two. All right, so we're gonna take the protocols here where it might be 100 or 150 meters and hit them real hard with high rest. So that might look like doing the titanium 100 meter hit, the dagger 100 meter hit, the Franco, all right, instead of doing a, a double 150 or 300 there. You might do the double 150 on the first day of the week because you get 300 meters for that. The arrow here, that means you should be completing that within 45 seconds or 55 seconds, and then you'll restart every 90 seconds, something like that. Give yourself the right amount of rest time to get the work done. This is kind of in your hands. And then the body weight circuits, this is just what you might do after a run session on vacation, or if you hit a max strength session and you feel like you've got a little bit in the tank, then get this done, or maybe even on a day off. It depends if you if you want to be great. Get this done one or two times a week. If you just want to be average, maybe do it once every three or four weeks. And if you don't want to make it any further after college, then you can ignore this page. And that's everything. Um, any questions, reach out to um, Coach Wall McGee or Coach Luke. And um, good luck.